the way we think is a consequence of the way we evolve to think. The behavior of the octopus doesn't really make sense unless we see it in the place that it evolved. The place that the octopus evolved, the bottom of the sea, is a place so alien to us that it might as well be another planet. And some scientists, like Dominic Civitilli, believe it's the closest we can get to understanding how extraterrestrials might think. I was really interested in like the origin of life, for instance, and this study of potential alien life in the universe. And I was really interested in evolutionary psychology. The origin of the mind and the origin of, of intelligence. I really appreciate being able to dive for my research. During one dive, seemingly out of nowhere, there was this big piece of kelp with eyes that was breathing. And we brought her back, which was a handful. Alone in the lab, I feel my movement being watched. And her arms just like move hypnotically. And yeah, there she is just like kind of staring at me. I'm staring at her. And there's this like weird feeling of like familiarity of you are the strangest, weirdest creature I've ever seen. And yet there she is just very curious looking at me, probably thinking the same thing. I want to look at them and wonder what they're thinking, but that's not the right question to ask. That's a very human question to ask. The way I think and my conception of thinking is fundamentally different from theirs. It says a lot about me and a lot about what it means to be a human and what it means to think in a very human way as I am investigating this completely different form of thought. I am looking at how the arms of the octopus and the suckers are acquiring chemical and mechanical information from their environment, and then how the arms are integrating this information so that the octopus's arms can allow it to make these complex decisions. It's not about how intelligent they are, it's about how they are intelligent. Most of the octopus's nervous system exists within its arms. One of your fingertips probably has a few hundred mechanical receptors on them. One sucker has tens of thousands of, of mechanical and, and chemical receptors. That sends out a very general, vague motor command to the arms. Crawl, feed, flee. That can happen without any innervation from the brain. It's kind of hard to discriminate who's actually making the decisions. Is it the arms or is it the brain? That then begs the question, how much is the brain actually doing? Their arms are thinking for themselves in a lot of ways. Their skin is thinking for itself in a lot of ways. That's what makes their camouflage so sophisticated. It has a nervous system of itself. And I'm looking at how that information is processed between arms to be able to make intelligent decisions that have made the octopus so infamous. This infamous intelligence allows the octopus to do incredible things. Things like escaping enclosures in captivity or using shells to build body armor in the wild. To study it, Dominic and his team gather data and map the octopus with 3D cameras to look for patterns and symmetries and watch how the arms work cooperatively and independently. In the future, an implant in the octopus's brain could complete the picture giving us new insights into how neural structures affect the sensory capability of a creature so different from us. We don't know if alien life exists, and if it does, they probably won't think like us. But they just might think like an octopus. We are not the intelligence of Earth, we are an intelligence of Earth. I hope it really puts into perspective how different intelligence can be. It gives us a perspective on our own cognition, as well as gives us a perspective on the kinds of 
intelligence that can be evolving in the universe around us.